Hi, this is Sesh. We're on again for another lesson in data structures and algorithms. In this lesson, we're going to see how we can efficiently store graphs using what's called the adjacency linked list scheme. This is a follow-up to a previous video that described the adjacency matrix storage structure for graphs. If you didn't see that yet, you probably want to do it now before continuing with this lesson. The title of that video is Graphs, Types, and Representation. Here's a sample friendship slash Facebook graph I used in the earlier video with storage for the vertex names in an array and storage for the edges in the adjacency matrix where the trues stand for the edges between the vertices. The problem is that there are too few trues relative to the total amount of space used by the matrix. The space utilization is only 8%. In case you jump right in and are wondering why it's 8% instead of 16%, it's because half the true values are really redundant. Since the matrix is symmetric about the main diagonal, it is sufficient to look only at the upper triangle or the lower triangle, so effectively we only need half of the 16 true values. It's pretty clear that we need a much more space efficient alternative than the adjacency matrix. And the clue to what that might be is in the empty or false valued cells in the matrix. We don't need these cells because they don't tell us anything about the graph we don't already know from the true values. So really, this is what we want. Now that the cells in the rows are not contiguous anymore, we need to stitch them together. The numbers at the top can't function as column indices since there isn't an array anymore. But we can get rid of them because they are vertex numbers, so we can bring them down to replace the trues. Next, let's bring in the vertex names array into the picture. Then we can get the row and column indices out of the picture and have the row links originate from an additional field in each of the vertex array cells. It is apparent now that we have linked lists for each vertex, holding the numbers of all the vertices that are adjacent to it. For instance, in the very first row for Sarah, the vertex numbers in the linked list 1 and 3 are those for Sam and Ajay, which are adjacent to Sarah in the graph. Observe that again, as in the adjacency matrix, each edge appears twice. Take the edge between Sam and Mira, for example. The vertex numbers for Sam and Mira are 1 and 4, respectively. So 4 appears in 1's linked list, and 1 appears in 4's linked list. Let's clean up the pictures so the linked lists look more like what we're used to seeing. This is the standard adjacency linked list storage scheme. Each vertex stores a linked list of vertices adjacent to it, resulting in an array of linked lists. Notice that the neighbors of a vertex appear in increasing vertex number order in the lists, but that's not a requirement. Neighbors can appear in any order. The adjacency linked lists data structure can be coded like this. The neighbor class implements the linked list nodes. The vertex class gathers together the vertex name and the pointer to the first node in its adjacency linked list. And lastly, the ADJ lists variable is the array of vertex objects, which is the collection of names and adjacency linked lists of all the vertices. Since each edge appears twice, the space needed for all the adjacency linked lists is twice the number of edges times the space for a linked list node. Now, each linked list node has two fields, so let's say this is two units of space. This is in contrast to the single unit of space for each cell of the matrix. In addition, there are as many units of pointer space in the vertex array as there are vertices. So leaving aside the space for the names of vertices, which is the same for the matrix as well, for this example, the number of units of space for the adjacency linked lists is eight edges times two nodes per edge times two units per node plus 10 units for the vertices, which adds up to 42 units of space in all. 
compare this with the space of the matrix, which is 10 times 10, or 100 units. In general, if the number of vertices is n, and the number of edges is e, then for an undirected graph, the space usage for the adjacency linked lists is n plus e times 2 times 2, or n plus 4 times e, while that for the matrix is n squared. For comparison, here are the adjacency linked lists for the website graph without edge weights. Since this is a directed graph, each edge contributes only one linked list node for a space usage of 8 edges times 2 units per node plus 6 units for the vertices, adding up to 22 units, while the matrix uses up 6 squared or 36 units. If the graph is weighted, then in addition to the vertex number of the neighbor, the weight of the connecting edge must be stored as well. Here is the storage for the weighted version of the website graph, with the linked list nodes modified to hold edge weights. The original data structure code can be modified to include edge weights by just changing the neighbor class like this. The space utilization now increases by 8 units, one unit per edge for the weight field, for a new total of 22 plus 8, or 30, while the matrix is still 36 units because the same array cells now hold weight numbers or negative ones instead of booleans. Here's a table that compares the space requirement for the linked list storage and the matrix for the four kinds of graphs we are studying. The size of the graphs are generalized to n vertices and e edges. Space required for the matrix is unchanging and only depends on the number of vertices, not on the edges. Space required for the linked lists varies according to whether the graph is undirected or directed, whether it has weights, and how many edges there are in the graph. Just to round this off with a realistic example, suppose we had a weighted undirected graph with 10,000 vertices. Say on average each vertex has 100 connections to other vertices. 10,000 times 100 is 1 million, but remember that each connection is counted twice, so the number of edges is half of 1 million, which is 500,000 edges. Each edge node would have three fields for the vertex number, the edge weight, and the next node, and each edge would be represented twice, so two nodes per, which means 6 units per edge. So the total space used would be 10,000 plus 500,000 times 6, which is over 3 million units of space, while the matrix would use up 10,000 squared, or 100 million units of space. To compare, the linked list scheme needs only 3% of the space that is needed by the matrix. OK. Let's pull together everything we've learned so far about the different kinds of graphs and the adjacency linked list storage into a simple program. This program will read an undirected, unweighted graph from a text file and populate the adjacency linked lists. Here we are in Eclipse. The program is in a file called graph.java in a package called graphs. Recall the data structure definition for the adjacency linked lists that we saw earlier for the friendship graph. That's pretty much copied as is here, right before the graph class itself. The graph class starts out by defining a field called ADJ lists or edge lists for the array of adjacency link lists. The constructor does all the heavy lifting reading the graph from a file whose name is passed as a parameter into edge lists. Let's take a look at the graph file, friendship.txt here, so we can get acquainted with the input format. There isn't a standard format that everyone uses, but this one works pretty well. 
the first line has the number of vertices in the graph, which is 10 in this case. The following 10 lines lists the vertex names one per line. Subsequently, each line lists one edge by writing out the two endpoint vertices. All right. Back in the graph class, the constructor starts by reading by setting up a scanner to read from the graph file. The first line of the file gives the number of vertices, which is used as the length of the adjacency linked list array which is created. The vertex names are then read in this for loop one at a time. Each time a vertex object is created with the name and null for the neighbor list. Just to refresh our memory, here's the vertex class again. Okay, time to read the edges. This is a little more involved. There are two vertex names on each line, but in order to add each to the linked list of the other, we need to know the corresponding vertex numbers. This functionality is implemented in the index for name method. Which scans the vertex objects in the edge lists array, comparing the name field of the object against the target name. If a match is found, it returns the current index in the array. Outside the loop, which means a match was not found, it returns negative 1. This should not happen if the graph file has correct data. Back in the code where the edges are being read, after getting the vertex numbers v1 and v2 for the two endpoint vertices, v2 is added as a neighbor to the front of v1's list, and v1 to v2's list. Two nodes for the same edge since the graph is undirected. Recall that neighbor is a linked list node. With vertex number and next fields. Since the neighbors don't need to be in any particular order, it is fastest to keep adding to the front of the lists. That's it for the constructor. To make sure we have read and stored the graph correctly, there's a print method we can use that runs through the edge lists array and for each vertex prints its name and the list of all its neighbors. Okay, let's run the program to make sure it works as advertised. All that the main method does is to ask and get a file name, create a graph object by passing the file name to the constructor, which will end up populating the adjacency link lists, and then print the graph. So here goes. Let's run this on our friendship graph. Let's stretch the view to get everything in one go. You can verify that the output matches the picture of the friendship graph. Now you might be thinking, what if the graph is directed? Well, the same code with just one small change can handle directed graphs as well. So take for example the website graph without edge weights. Every edge only goes one way, from the first vertex to the second vertex. So when the graph is read, going back to the constructor here, V2 should be added to V1's list, but not the other way. So all we need to do is to comment out the second line, save it, 
and we can run it on the website graph now to make sure it works correctly. So website.txt. Again, let's just increase the view and there you go. Now this is good, but we can go even one better. The way it works now, we need to change the code every time we switch between directed and undirected graphs. But if we change the graph format to include a line up front as to whether the graph is directed or undirected, then we can read that line in and use that information to act accordingly. So let's go ahead and go to the website graph file and add a line up front says directed and save this. And likewise for friendship.txt up before the number of vertices, we'll add a line that says undirected. Now in the graph class constructor, just before we read the vertices, we're going to add the statement string graph type is scanner next. And um, what we'll do is set up a variable, a Boolean variable called undirected, initialized tr true. And if graph type equals directed, then we can change that variable to false. And here, instead of commenting this line, we'll make it conditional on the graph being undirected. So if undirected, then do this. Okay, now let's run our program for both kinds of graphs. And here's website.txt. Well, that doesn't look good. And I think I know what I did here. Um, we we'll actually read the first line right up here. So I need to move this before that statement. So the very first read will be the graph type and then we get the next int and then we can do the rest of the stuff. Okay, let's do this again. Run the program. Website.txt. Looking good. Let's do it for friendship. txt and that looks good as well. Okay, that's about it for graph representation and storage. In summary, adjacency linked list is the way to go, except for a few niche applications where the matrix might be better. See you later.